Hey, welcome to Sports Unfolded NBA Ranking Show. I am your host, Eric, with the big dog in the house. My main man, Kenny, how are you? Doing good, doing good. So we are excited about this NBA season so far. Uh, you're you're sporting a, a little bit of, you know, swag there for our local hometown team who continues to dominate right now and have done very well with our, our list so far this season. But uh, we've got to obviously talk about all the teams that are on this list, Kenny, and we're going to bring that list up first so that the fans could see how you came up with these rankings and here we go my friend so at number five the grizzly uh memphis grizzlies at four the new orleans pelicans at three the phoenix suns at number two the milwaukee bucks and at number one is our boston celtics so that's they've been on this number one probably for most of this right i think this is week seven or eight and i think they've been on all but one as the number one team so yeah, pretty impressive great. what yeah pretty impressive what boston's been able to do so far this season uh and just if you think about where they were last season to now it's just amazing as, as, as to how they are but let's let's start right off with this number five team and that's the memphis grizzlies and uh they are currently the grizz 15 and nine nine and two at home so very good home record six and seven on the road so struggling a little bit on the road they were averaging one uh, 14.8 points per game, which is 10th overall in the league. Yep. 112.8 given up, which is 14th. So you think about it, they're playing a lot of close games. This week, Kenny, they face uh, OKC, Detroit, and Atlanta all at home. So that bodes well for them. Again, very good at home. Uh, and then I, I wanted to point out, we know about Ja and Ja, what he can do. But mm -hmm. Desmond Bain number five in the league 3.8 three point is made per game so he's also contributing uh similar to what he did last season but your thoughts on the memphis grizzlies and why they're at number five they can run they can run they can run the ball so they're 14 and 0 when they lead by double digits but they're iron when they don't gotcha so they got to get the, <laughs> they got to get the lead and, and then just you know maintain it Again, very young team. Again, what they did last season. If you look at the opportunities, if John Morant didn't get hurt last season in the in the postseason, right, we might be having a different conversation of where the Memphis Grizzlies are or who they are. Uh, so them getting hurt or him getting hurt during that uh, Golden State Warriors series, correct? Yeah. Yep. And he missed he missed a bunch of games, so that kind of hurt him. So yeah. Again. Fair to say they may not be on this list next week. I mean, I looked at it. The only team that really you could possibly maybe the Sacramento Kings, as surprising as it is, they're 13 and 9 so far this season. Yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Yeah, they won't be on this list uh next week. Uh against the Timberwolves, they were terrible. Uh 16 for 30 from the free throw line, shooting 69% from the free throw line. They gotta make their free throws and they gotta rebound. Yeah, I'm a little concerned too that again. Three easy games this week, all at home. Yep. They should be able to win these games. If they lose any of these games, they definitely, again, these would be some bad losses and probably knock them out. Yeah. All right. So very fun, exciting team at number four, and that's the New Orleans Pelicans. When you talk about fully healthy, mm. being healthy and how important that is, Zion Williamson, healthy. <laughs> healthy. He's so far been able to maintain that. They're 15 and eight so far this season, nine and three at home, six and five on the road, 117.3 points per game, which is fourth overall in the league. So they're scoring a ton of points, giving up 110.3, which is 10th. So they're in the top 10 in both statistical categories when it comes to, so they're not just scoring, they're, they're shutting teams down. Yeah. Tough week though, at home for Detroit. I know how high you were on Detroit, but then back to back games at home with Phoenix. Yeah. So your thoughts on the Pelicans, why they've been so successful so early this season, and then also can they maintain and stay on this top five? Yeah, I think they can. The last eight games, they um, beat teams by double digits. Um, and Jose Alvaron, 38 points, career high, no turnovers. Did okay. a good job coming off the bench in 27 minutes. He, yeah, again, get, get a solid bench. Zion, again, we know is going to take some time off. He's not going to be fully healthy. Uh, Brandon Ingram, 
Uh, he's another one that sometimes gets injured. Uh, you know, can't stay healthy. McCollum's, uh, uh, you know, an older player. That yeah. They're going to have some rest too. So it'd be interesting to see if the Pelicans can maintain this. How big of an impact do you think Zion Williamson could have for them this season if he stays healthy? Huge. Huge. He's, aver- it- he's averaging four assists a game. So he's he's getting his spots and he and now he knows how to pass the ball out when he gets double teamed. And they just have to have shooters around him. Yeah, look, I, I just how dynamic of a player he is. They signed him to that big contract. Right now it's it's paying off. They they're getting yeah. their money's worth, right? They're a winning ball club. They're seven games over 500. I just I'm concerned about the health. It, it concerns me because he just hasn't been able to stay consistent at it. Me too. So if, if I was going to say the Phoenix Suns would be at number three, Kenny, you would probably tell me you're crazy, Eric, because we mm-hmm. thought about what this team was last season. I think they finished the season number one uh, in last year's poll. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So far, 16 and eight this season, 12 and two at home. So phenomenal home record, but four and six on the road just have not been the same team when they travel. 116.5 points per game, which is seventh overall, 109.3 given up, which is sixth. So you think about it, they have not been predominantly known as a defensive team. They're only giving up 109 points. So very good so far this season yeah. when it comes to defense. Tough stretch, though, this week. We talked about it. Boston tonight yep. at home and then at New Orleans for those back to back games. Your thoughts on why the Phoenix Suns aren't better than what their record shows right now, 16 and 8. Uh, those back to backs are terrible. Those back to backs are horrible. You know, Devin Booker averaged 45 points last week, shot 78 percent. Wow, and, and they did it without Chris Paul, who will be back tonight. And we'll be so, back tonight. Is this an indication, though? Is this team again? When you look at the West, they're the highest ranked West team so far. Are they the best team in the West? Yeah, most definitely. And once they get Chris Paul back, we'll see if he's, you know, he's he has rust or is he well rested or he's ready to go or. I feel like we have this conversation a lot about Chris Paul. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Because I believe last time we said it, right, how great it would be to get the rest before he gets into the postseason because he got yeah. he lost some time there as well. So, mm-hmm. look, I like Phoenix. This is a big game uh, tonight because both of these teams could be considered NBA finals. Yeah. Yep. opponents and Huge game. who's gonna who's gonna you know strike that first blow and become the the team that the other team has to really think about and worry about uh we know what boston's been doing phoenix a little inconsistent but very good at home 12 and 2 so yeah very good matchup there mm-hmm. so i believe this was my pick for the nba finals <laughs> and that's the number two milwaukee bucks uh so 17 and 6 so far this season 11 and 3 at home Six and three on the road, mm-hmm. only scoring 112.6 points per game, which is 15. So they're middle of the pack when it comes to scoring. But third overall, defensively, only giving up 107.8 points. So you talk about a defensive juggernaut. That's the Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis, out of this world right now, second overall in scoring in the NBA at 31.9 points and fifth in rebounding at 11.3. So we talk about Tatum MVP candidate, which we'll discuss next. But Giannis is uh, quietly having another one of those seasons where he's dominating. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah he dominates. So one of those games, uh, some of their games this week, Sacramento at home. So, again, we talk about a high-scoring team, second overall in scoring Sacramento. Can this defense stop them? Then at Dallas and at Houston. So mm-hmm. two very winnable games. Dallas is a toss-up because, again, depends on what Mavericks team shows up and if Luka you know, can do Luka things, which sometimes he has that ability to do. Yeah. But they just got back Middleton. How strong are the Bucks? How much of a threat right now are the Milwaukee Bucks to the Boston Celtics? Just like you said, they just got Middleton on Friday. He did a pretty good job. Five for seven. Mid range. Um, seven assists, no turnovers. Yeah, they they're gonna ease him back in. Yeah, right. They they're it. not gonna they're not gonna rush him back into anything, but defensively is where I say, look, most teams that are going to get there, Boston last season to get to the finals, it was all about defense. They became the number one defensive team. Mm -hmm. Right now, Milwaukee as a contender is playing probably some of the best defense in the league. Yeah. 
that makes a difference. And nice. now you get Middleton back. Drew Holiday has been playing extremely well yep. in his absence. You got guys off the bench like Grayson Allen who have done very well for them. And then your boy, Brooke Lopez, I know how high you are in Brooke, but defensively what he's been able to do and even offensively. So I, I don't know. Let me ask you this. If you had to vote MVP right now, are you going Giannis? No. You're going to go with the guy at number one? Yep. <laughs> is that is any indication of the thing that's on your hat? Maybe it's, it's a, a small factor in that? Or I am not biased at all. No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, as I could see that little Ray Allen in the background as well. My <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I somehow, I don't believe you. <laughs> somehow I don't believe you. So let's talk about those Boston Celtics. The number one team again mm -hmm. this week, 20 and five overall, 11 and two at home, nine and three on the road. 120.6 points per game is number one in the league. They are the highest scoring team in the league this okay. season. 13th overall defensively, though, giving up 112.6. Rob Williams, I think, will solve some of that problem when he's back and fully healthy. Yes. But they're on the West Coast. Very tough uh, stretch here at Phoenix, at Golden State, at the Clippers. And then before the, uh, our next rankings will be out on Tuesday, they play the Lakers that night as well. So Jason Tatum, 30.8 points per game, fourth overall in the league. Why are the Boston Celtics so successful so far this season? They move the ball and they can score. Their bench is out. The bench has been outstanding. Tatum has been outstanding. Everybody knows their role. Um, they lack defense, like last, like la not like last year. Last year they were number one in defense. They need to start rebounding the ball. Uh, they're nine and zero oh against the West. The West Coast is coming up, so hopefully, if they can offensive rebound, if they can rebound. We'll win a couple of games. So the dynamic of Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, probably the one, two best combo in the league now. Mm -hmm. Fair to say. Yeah. The fact that they're getting stuff out of Brogdon off the bench. He is so confident. Right. He just seems yeah, like he's, a he's, different player. Yeah. He is just so confident when he shoots. Man, it's, it's. So the only thing I think hurts this team right now is size, right? Yeah. Can they get, can they get big? Can Brad Stevens make a move, you know, at some point to get them a big guy? Because Rob Williams, again, not fully healthy. The Al yeah. Hoffer deal keeps Al around for a while. So you think about continuity and what they've been able to do. These guys are going to be around for the next couple of years. Yeah. This is a great window right now for the Boston Celtics. They're going to need to make a move. Uh, Blake Griffin the other night had a big game for them. Uh, yeah, so, great. again, that's nice to see where, <laughs> look, you're going to get, if you're going to get contributions from some of those guys off the bench, it bodes well for this team. Again, this stretch to your point, tough. Which of, of these three games do you think they'd try to make more of a point of, though? I probably not the Clippers, but Phoenix, Golden State. Would you think that they're more in like in tune to try to beat Phoenix, or do you think that Golden State hiccup last season with the finals and they're looking more? If they were going to circle a game on their calendar right now, Kenny, which one would it be? It would be Phoenix. You think so because of where they stand right now? Yep. First would be Phoenix. Then Christmas Day, it would be the Bucks. Oh, they play Christmas Day. Yeah. Oh, a what a present. I like that by the NBA. That's really good. Me too. I could take that all day of the week, my friend. <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna put you on the spot. All right. Celtics win in the NBA championship this season. Yes, we are. Wow. You said it with confidence right. and you just jinxed them. And hey. you just changed them. <laughs> See, I'm looking for that, you know, that, that Chicago record, you know. Oh, you I think, think we can that, do it. They're not 72 and 10. No, they already got five losses. They're already halfway there. I think you can do it. Oh, 73 and 9 is the record. Golden State. Yeah. There's no way they lose four games the rest of the year. <laughs> All right, Kenny. Uh, what do you do? Kenny? Yes. No more tequila for you, my friend. Okay? <laughs> no more tequila for you. You are officially cut off. <laughs> if if I were to tell you the one thing that scares me about your comment would be Joe Missoula. Mm. As well as he's been so far this season, the inexperience at the coaching level in the playoffs, does that not put a small sense of doubt in your mind that this team could fail because of that? 
you know what? I thought about it long and hard. And I'm going to tell you, no, it doesn't bother me at all. Because you got to remember, Mark Jackson, he was a coach of Golden State. Yeah. No, great point. And and he and he taught them boys the backcourt. Steph Curry and Clay. Yep. He, he taught them how to you know run that backcourt. Then they fired my man, and then Steve Kerr comes in. Just fine tunes it enough to get a championship. Thank you. Thank no, you. that's a great point and a great way to look at it. I didn't look at it that way. So yeah, very. Very smart way to look at it, Kenny, right? Maybe that that's, this change is going to actually help them. I may got them to the point of them understanding how to get there. Exactly. Maybe Missoula can coach them enough to get the win. Exactly. No, great point. Great point. So let's bring up that list one more time. And, and again, we finished at number five with the Memphis Grizzlies this week. The New Orleans Pelicans at four. Mm -hmm. The Phoenix Suns at three. The Milwaukee Bucks at two. And the Boston Celtics remain at number one this week in our ranking. So, Kenny, if I was going to ask you if there's a team or teams that should be a little nervous this week going in of either dropping or falling off of this list, which teams would you say we should be most concerned with? Uh, New Orleans Pelicans. Just the back-to-back -back with Phoenix this week? Yeah, back-to-back -back with Phoenix. We'll see. We'll see how we do. They'll do. Chris Paul's back. To see how healthy he is, and I tell you what, if he tries to get everybody involved in in any games in the first quarter, he is ready. Yeah, it's just a shame. Again, Chris Paul, we talk about such a dynamic player and what he's able to do, and yet somehow every year we're talking about injuries now with him. And if you talk about a guy that should get a chip, he's probably yes. that guy. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, he's always going to be on a good uh, a team that's good enough to possibly win it that I don't think he'll be one of those trade guys that, you know, towards the end of a, you know, a season where you're just, you know, dumping people. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, it's a shame because again, great player, great player. Oh, third, third best point guard of all time. All right, my friend, it's do you remember time. And do you remember we have basically three players, coaches, teams, we come up with a few different things and we try to quiz you on it. So, Ron does it with the NHL. He actually got a couple today, so maybe I'm not doing my job well enough. So we'll have to see if you can mm -hmm. uh, to do a, a do a little better here. And I guess I would say how we will start it off is um, this player was with uh, the San Antonio Spurs, mm -hmm. considered one of the uh, one of the coldest men on the court. I guess mm -hmm. it would be the the fairest way to say it based on his nickname okay uh, and um the sweet finger roll man he had a sweet finger roll oh george gervin george gervin very good got the player but do you know what team he ended his career with oh i am gonna blow your mind with this one my friend because you're not gonna believe it hmm Okay, so I know that when he played horse with Pistol Pete, he was still with the Spurs. Uh, wow. George Gervin, George Gervin, George Gervin. Why do I want to say the Dallas Mavericks? Dallas Mavericks is your guess? That's not right, though. Okay, you ready for this one? I'm ready. Chicago Bulls, my friend. And you want to know you want to know who he played with that year? That's right. That's right. Some guy named Michael Jordan. That's oh my God. That is so right. I can't, I forgot all about that. George Gervin was yep. there before Michael Jordan became Air Jordan. Yeah. 1985. Right, the yep. Iceman. Cold on the court, bro. That finger yep. roll, right? Finger roll. George Gervin, though. <laughs> and if you think about it, right? Did not remember that. Wow. It's so hard to remember that. Wow, I forgot all about I forgot all about that. Dang. Right. <laughs> oh for one. Oh for one, yes. All right. So this player mm -hmm. was considered one of the best rebounders and scorers of all time as a big man. Mm. Actually up there in most of these statistical categories. Played for the 
Philadelphia 76ers. He used to part C's. How's that? He used to part C's. Part C's. He used to part C's. Best get a uh, best guy. Uh, part C's. Or like get. Yeah. Part C's. Yeah. Who part C's? He used to part C's. Moses Malone. There we go. Moses parts the C, bro. So okay. Moses Malone, Philadelphia 76ers. Do you know yep. where he ended his career? Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. Where? The Bullets. The Bullets? Moses yeah, Malone. The bullets. bullets. Yeah. All right, let's see if you're right. Oh, gosh. San Antonio, my friend. But in between, let me say this. You, could, you were semi-right on this because he went to Washington, Atlanta, Milwaukee, Back to Philadelphia and then finish his career with the San Antonio Spurs. So Moses Malone. And I remember him with Atlanta. For some reason, yeah. that one sticks in my head more than any others of those I remember, teams. I remember him with the Bullets. The Bullets, man. Wow. Yeah. You know why they <laughs> changed, you know why they changed their name? It was considered a little too threatening, wasn't it? They wanted to reduce crime in Washington. Yeah, in Washington. So they didn't want to associate it with yeah. you. Which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Which is kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah I'm sure that. that's the crime went way down after that. I'm sure. Yeah. No, 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 no. yeah, no, no, didn't. no, no. All right. So I'm going to give you a give me here. This is a gimme. All right. I would okay, think. All right. All right. All right? So mm -hmm. Rick Patino was the head coach of the Boston Celtics from 1997 to 2001. Yeah. Yeah. Who replaced Rick Patino as the next coach of the Boston Celtics? Oh, jeez. Do you remember, Kenny, who was the coach after Rick Bettino? And he was there for four years. So four years. Harry Burton, not walking oh. through that door. Harry Burton, no, he is not walking through that door, my friend. Neither is Robert Parrish or Kevin McHale, just so you know. Exactly. And as soon as you get that through your thick head. Yeah. You know what I need you to, you know what I need you to do next time we play this game, Kenny? Mm. This game. Mm. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen, we're talking about practice. <laughs> not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. practice. All right. So not a game. Not a game. Okay. Not not a game. So the game, I think you may need some practice next time, though. Yeah. We're gonna have to get a little practice. Right. I gotta brush up. Um, <laughs> all right. I want to say Jim O'Brien. You want to say Jim O'Brien? Let's see if you're correct. Jim Let's see if you are right, my friend. After. Is it Jim O'Brien? You are correct, my friend. Jim O'Brien. 2001 to 2004. Believe it or not, 139 and 119. So he actually had a winning record. 13 Yo. and 13 in the playoffs. He was 500 in the playoffs. Yo, I like Jim O'Brien when I was Right? Jim O'Brien was a good coach. He He's really was. Good coach. And you think Real about the mess coach. that Patino left him and what he was oh. able to build. Right. So that was interesting. Good, good job, though, on that one. You know, I Jim remember Jim O'Brien. How do you Why remember Jimmy O'Brien? What do you, how do you remember? Ryan, he is the first coach to coach an all black team. Really? In the NBA. Yeah. Wow. I saw, I saw the team was everybody was African American. Wow. Everybody was African American. Right. And he was an assistant coach with Patino, correct? Yes. Yes, yes he was. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's right. And there was a little bit of, of that, yeah. like you're bringing in the same kind of style, but he was a completely different coach. Yeah. Yeah. Rick Patino didn't do so well in Boston. <laughs> no, not at all. No, not, at all. not at all, man. It didn't work for him. Didn't work for him. Mm -hmm. So this has been the Sports Unfolded NBA Ranking Show. We are normally on every Friday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. And that is on Rhode Island Broadcasting. So check out Rhode Island Broadcasting. If you'd like to follow us on our social media platforms, that mm -hmm. ticker right down there, it's kind of telling you everything and each way you can can follow us. Uh, we post these each and every week. We also do our NBA, uh, NFL and NHL rankings. Once Major League Baseball season starts again, can't wait for that. I know you have some opinions on the Aaron Judge situation. Save it for our MLB preview show, Kenny. Don't. 
All right. But um, look forward to next week's list, my friend, and seeing if any of this changes because there's going to be some really good games this week, and some of these teams are going to possibly lose a couple of these games. So it will be interesting to see if they can hold on to, the, to these top five spots. Oh, yeah. My friend, thank you again for joining. I will, see, I will see you next week. Everybody that's joined live, thank you very much. All those that are going to watch afterwards, check us out, follow us, do all you can. And all we ever ask for every single week, my friend, is peace in this world. Peace.